What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 4th of February in 2019, as well as briefly taking a look at what Google reported in terms of their earnings. So I'm sure all you guys saw in the title that the tech stocks have continued their run. And if you guys have been paying attention to the stock market over the past week and a half, you saw that the tech stocks, especially Facebook and Apple, have been on an absolute tear, and that was nothing different than today, guys. Today, we saw much more of that, with Apple being up $4.75 per share, Facebook up $3.50 per share. We saw Amazon up around $7 per share today, Microsoft up a solid $3, and of course, Google just reported their earnings, and they're up around $22 at the close. Close. We'll take a look at the stock in a little bit to see how it's reacting to the earnings after we talk about the earnings. So stay tuned in a couple of minutes later on in this video, we're going to be talking about that. So now that we saw a little bit on what the tech stocks did, and of course, we're going to take a look at the charts in a couple of minutes. Let's take a look at what the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ did so we can get an overall idea of how the market pushed today. We'll take a look at some different time frames, and let's hop right into it, guys. So the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States of America, up around $18 today up 0.68% on the close. We can see here, guys, like we've been knowing, oops, not that close, like we've been knowing over the past couple of trading days, we broke out of that 180 SMA resistance. The 50 SMA is honestly looking like it's about to cross the 180 SMA in a couple of days here if this uptrend continues, meaning that, you know, whenever we get a 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA, we've talked about this in a bunch of videos, that is a very bullish signal very basic technical analysis here guys you know you know using simple moving averages to identify an uptrend or a downtrend very basic guys you know if the 50 crosses above that's a bullish sign and of course if it crosses below like we saw back here in October that is a bearish sign so keep an eye on that potential cross that we might get in a couple of days and of course, we're trading above that 180 simple moving average right now, like we've covered in the past couple of videos. But if we take a look even closer here, guys, the continuation of the uptrend is still evident, right? It held above that red trend line that we can see here. It's pushed to another higher high to around 27.24. And there's honestly no downtrend reversal pattern in sight. I thought we were potentially getting it here a couple of days back with the double top pattern, but we found the support and pushed to another higher high. So that was invalid. And of course, I thought it was going to happen here again, potentially in yesterday's video that I talked about it. But you know, we saw the push to a higher high today. So honestly, guys, the continuation is still there. It's not really looking like it's pulling back anytime soon based off of the technical analysis. So now that we can see, you know, the SPX, let's take a look over here to the Dow Jones to see what happens. So we saw it was up around 175 points today up around 0.7%, just like the SPX guys were trading above the 180 simple moving average with the 50 SMA nearing the cross above the 180 SMA, which does signal a lot, a lot of bullish potential in that stock index ETF, whatever we we're looking at. But in this case, of course, we're looking at the index of the Dow Jones, right? And if we take a look on the smaller charts, just like the SPX guys, you know, we're still up trending. We held above that uh, trend line here. We pushed to a higher high to about $25,200. And there's no sign of a reversal in sight, right? I thought it might have been here with this potential double top. We didn't get it. We pushed up. We ended up gapping up, pushing to another higher high. I thought it could have been here potentially, right? This morning, I thought we were selling off. But again, we held that trend line. We pushed to another higher high. And, uh, you know, the run is continuing. So just to give you guys a quick little brief, um, you know, showing of what, uh, you know, the value of percent and what percentage value have we increased since this bottoming out point. The Dow Jones is up around 13.5%. So that's a very strong start to 2019. And the SPX, I think it's up a little bit more, probably around 15, 
right right around 14 or actually no right around 1390 so close to 14 percent which again very solid start to 2019 and let's take a look at the nasdaq guys of course the nasdaq is very tech heavy that's why it's one of the higher moving indices today it's up around one percent and i thought at the close it might have been up around 1.1 percent but again for those of you guys that don't know these are the futures so they could be down a little bit after market hours in the reaction of google and let's see yup it did peak up here we can see after google came out they pushed down a bit so that's probably what is dragging down the nasdaq but uh nonetheless let's take a look at what it's doing on the 180 chart here we can see you know it got out of that horizontal pattern that we were talking about it broke the 6800 resistance it held this one this previous resistance which is now a new support as a support right it held it for a couple of days here we can see and now we're popping up above it so just like i talked about in the previous video guys if you guys remember this comment down below but i was talking about how we were trading in this channel right we broke out of that channel holding this new resistance old resistance as a new support with the possibility of filling this as the next channel right that's exactly why i have these trend lines here it's pretty much playing out you know exactly as to how uh, my technical analysis was done and what I said in the video a couple of days ago, right? So we can see the clear bounce on this support. We broke out of that 6,900 area, right? And now we're trending up, potentially getting to around the $7,000 mark next. And of course, after that, at around 7,100, that is where we're going to see if the NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ indice in general is going to be able to, you know, fill that gap. So as of now, guys, you know, all of the indices are uptrending still, no sign of a reversal. And honestly, the way it's looking, guys, with the optimism that's pumped into these stocks right now, we could see some more green over the next couple of days. But I'm still sticking to my thoughts that we're going to pull back eventually, and once we do pull back, it's going to be pretty strong, right? Not saying we're going to have a recession there anytime soon, but, you know, we have seen some hedge fund managers, including Ray Dalio, say that they do see signs of a recession potentially happening at the end of 2019 towards the beginning of 2020. But honestly, you could call BS on that because I feel like every single year over the past six years, We've seen people say every single year that there's going to be a recession and there wasn't a recession, but at some point, you know, it's going to happen, guys, and the, la the later, the later we wait, the farther we get into this bull run, you know, the closer we do get to that recession, right? So now that we got over, you know, the pretty much the, uh, the, the market update, the brief analyses of the uh, major indices, let's take a look at Google stock very quickly. We'll talk about their earnings. I have some notes here on my phone and we'll go over that briefly, see the reaction of the price to the uh, earnings report. And then we'll talk about what I traded today and uh, get on with the rest of the video. So very briefly, guys, very, very briefly here, earnings per share beat by a heavy margin, $12.77 in EPS this quarter for Google versus $10.86 expected. I believe the, the drastic change in this is due to some tax reform plan. I was reading about that. I forget off the top of my head right now, but for those of you guys that know what I'm talking about, drop a comment down below, but I'm pretty sure it's some tax law that made their EPS stand out uh, this particular quarter. But anyway, the revenue was $31.84 billion versus $31.3 billion expected. Revenue rose 22% year over year their revenue growth benefited from strength in mobile search including youtube guys so one thing about uh google's earnings i would love to know honestly how much money um you know youtube itself is bringing in because youtube i'm sure is one of the biggest business components of google the amounts of you know volume and search it's getting, you know, all these new creators, the ads, everything. I'm sure they're bringing in a crap, crap, crap ton of money. But anyway, the USA revenue rose 21% growth year over year. The EMEA revenue growth was 20% year over year. Asia Pacific growth was 29% year over year. And the other America's growth was 16% year over year. And another key thing to note, guys, 
just to show how powerful of a company Google is, they ended the year with $109 billion in cash and investments. So they have, guys, they have $100 billion in cash just sitting there, potentially waiting to buy out. Well, obviously some of it's tied up in investments, but the some of the the lump sum of money that's in strictly cash, right? You know, they can go out and buy a different company. They can buy this, buy that. They have so much leverage just having that much cash. And I don't know how easily um, they can liquidate their investments, whatever their investments are in, but I'm sure, you know, they can drag some of that money out and put it into, uh, you know, some other things if they decide to buy, right? So one bad thing about uh, the Google's earnings report was that their operating income fell short of estimate 8.6 billion expected versus 8.2 billion dollars um, reported. So that's just a brief, brief uh, gist of uh, Google's earnings reports. There's a ton of things that I didn't touch upon, but I just wanted to mention, you know, the revenue growth the EPS growth, and of course, the strength of the company with the $109 billion in cash and investments. And we can see, guys, Google stock super, super volatile here after market hours. It spiked from 1130 up to around 1160. That's a 3% move to the upside. And then it swung down 4% nearly to the downside. And now it's hovering around. Um, we see these two spikes here that does seem like a little bit of a uh, manipulation there in Google stock. But uh, anyway, you know, it's down around three, what's it down like 3% right now after market hours, not too crazy of a move to the upside or the downside in terms of Google stock. So let's talk about what I traded today very quickly before we talk about a couple other stocks, ETFs that do look pretty solid right now and didn't move according to what I talked about in yesterday's video. So what I traded today, guys, I'm sure you all saw Cron had an absolutely ridiculous run again today. It was up 17% at one point. I captured around 1.2% of this really early on in the day today, guys. I was done trading literally within 20 minutes of the market open and pretty much how this trade ended up going down is very basic. We we can see here we gapped up to around $21.84. I was actually explaining this to someone in the DM on Discord today. We gapped up $21.84 and ended up gapping down to around $21.40 where we found that support. And that opened up roughly 2% margin of profit and then once I saw guys what I wanted to see is a hold above that 180 SMA as a new support we got that we saw a strong green candlestick it started to trend up and this is when I started to build in a position once we started to find that support once we started to bounce back up that is where I ended up building my position right very very simple here I was looking to see if it was going to fill that gap from the pre-market high. This is often how I day trade, right? You know, early on in the day within the first 30 minutes because a lot of stocks are choppy early on in the day. This is an example of a big sell-off, but I want to see if it found support, it found support, and I ended up getting in at around $21.61, I believe. And then I started to scale in until I took around a 1.2% profit guys very quick little scalp trade up to around 2190 the whole idea and goal of this trade was to profit on the gap fill and once we filled that gap guys i got my 1.2 percent ended up taking my profits and then uh just pretty much played it safe for the rest of the day sure if i held you know i would have made a crap ton of money i probably would have made 15 times the amount of money that i did make but you know Profits, profit, consistency is consistency, and that's what I'm all about, guys. I don't go for the home run trades. I like to keep it very, uh, you know, risk managed. I like to keep it very consistent, and I like to keep the wins and the profits small so that I can last, you know, over time. Because again, like I say a lot in these videos, if you go for the home run trade every single time, and when I say home run trade, these could be some of these penny stocks that are pumped up by some of these, you know, stock people, you know, on uh, YouTube in the internet that sell crap like that, you know, the chat rooms, it could be some other volatile penny stock that's on like a biofarm, you know, penny stock. Some of these stocks, guys, 
They can go up 100, 500, 1,000 percent in a day, but you can lose money if you get in late and you get in on the dump. Let's say after you know the chat room, whatever with these chat rooms. I don't even know. Uh, I've never honestly been in one, but I heard a lot of bad stuff about them. Uh, you know, people losing money. Just be careful, guys. Honestly, I'm here to you know really help you guys out. I, f I feel like you know a lot of people need to hear. Uh, you know. It's not all about the home run trades. You know, you can lose money if you do get in at the wrong time on these penny stocks. And that's just really discouraging. And, you know, a lot of people end up quitting due to that. And honestly, I just hate seeing that. It just gives, you know, traders and, uh, you know, stock trading in general a bad rap, a bad name. And, you know, I'm not about that. Honestly, I really hate that. So, um, let me know down below what you guys think about that. But, you know, that's pretty much it in terms of my trade today on Cron. Some other ones that I'm looking at and I'm really liking right now are, you know, these crude oil ETFs. We finally got that pullback like I was talking about in yesterday's video that I was looking for. We saw crude oil was a bit overbought. I wanted to see that pullback and the hold above the EM or the 50 SMA rather. We got that. So that could potentially be, or rather this could be potentially a solid entry point for UWT. So UWT, I know a lot of you guys traded it today. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are swing trading it overnight. This is one that I'm going to be looking to trade tomorrow, possibly pre-market, during the market. We'll see how it ends up going. So UWT, guys, I'm watching that one very closely. JDST ended up doing very well today. We saw it was up around 3%. This is another one that I was talking about in yesterday's video. I was looking for that pullback in the gold futures. We ended up seeing that pullback today from 1330. Actually, no, it was at around 1325 earlier today, I believe, right? Or no, that was at the close on this previous trading week. And we saw it sell off all the way to 1313. And now it's holding that support, guys. So let's say, you know, it breaks the support to the downside. This could continue to sell off maybe to the 1305 level. But let's say it holds this as a support. You know, this could be a potential entry in JNUG. And this is exactly what I was talking about in yesterday's video, guys. And the beauty of these ETFs. You can profit on the downside, which is what I pretty much called out, right? And then you can profit on the upside if you do find the support in the uh, future that you are trading. So that is what I'm looking at, guys. You know, tomorrow potentially entry point for JDST if we break here. But let's say we hold this uh, support and we break this 1320 resistance. That could be another position to go long on uh, JNUG. So those are the two main ones that I'm watching tomorrow. We saw, obviously, the marijuana stocks. I don't have to show you guys again. You saw Cron did absolutely amazing today. We saw CGC. It popped up to like $51 at one point. Um, we saw ABC. This one did very well. Not ABC. This isn't it. Wait, is this it? No, no, no. This is not an ACB. ACB. Is that Aurora? Yeah, there it is. ACB. That's up 9% today, guys. So, you know, these are all screaming pullback, but every time I do say that, they run up another 10%. So, honestly, they're disobeying the technicals, guys. They don't give a crap about the technicals. These are just going to become more overbought, 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 and then at one point, they're just going to crash, guys. So, I'm waiting for the crash. It's going to come. You know, we saw it this time, right? It crashed from 12 all the way to like 10.50 in the matter of about a day, it seems like. So, so we could potentially see that in one of these days coming up. Who knows? So another one I want to talk about briefly before I end the video is J&J. &J. This one also got the pullback that I was waiting for. And it's looking like it's holding above that previous resistance, which is now a new support at around 131. Sure, it could probably sell off more to around 131.50. And if it does, that might be an even juicier entry point for a swing trade. But of course, if we break below, you know, that's going to be a break of pattern. We could be heading back to the downside. So I'm watching to see if it does end up holding this pattern, guys. This could be a good entry point for a safer swing trade, in my opinion. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I'm sorry if this fan is bothering you. My computer is overheating right now, and the fan does seem a bit loud. So if you got if you got that in the audio and it bothered you, I, I do apologize. Uh, 
you know, I'm in the process of getting a MacBook Pro right now, which will not have these overheating issues. But until then, guys, I'm sorry if you do hear these, uh, you know, this fan in the videos. And I uh, hope you guys did enjoy it. Like I said, drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Again, thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate you all. I'll catch you later.